You're not gonna make it No, you ain't gonna make it You're not gonna make it But you can Hey, welcome to the You're Not Gonna Make It podcast, where I discuss things that may or may not prevent you from living a good life. I'll just put it that way. I'm your host, Kevin. This episode, we have a doozy of a topic. This one will really make you feel like you're not gonna make it every time it happens. And that topic is election years, specifically United States presidential election years. Every four years, we deal with this. And it's fun for everyone. What happens is we choose one of two colors, red or blue. And then we make that blue or red puppet go up and do God knows what for four years. All while normal people are dying from poverty and cringe. And to be fair, when you're on, when you're running to run the government, allegedly, And you have to be on TV, on the internet all the time. There's bound to be a lot of embarrassing, awkward stuff that happens. But man, sometimes it feels like our politicians, I'm American, by the way, unfortunately, our politicians are particularly embarrassing for various reasons, whether it's by themselves or in reaction to their opponent. Now, I say two colors, red or blue, because those are the only two parties that matter, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. We have other parties, Libertarian, Green, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares, though. They don't matter. They are not going to make it. Not joking. It's all a popularity contest. And speaking of that, one of the biggest issues with this is the effect that all these political ads have on the people. Now, whether you're for one candidate or another, you're going to be inundated with ads for both. And a lot of people will take those ads to heart. And we'll get very upset at people who don't agree with them. And the, those people cannot be reasoned with. So if you're thinking of trying to have a rational conversation, just don't. And unfortunately, even if you want to just step back, not talk about it, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't save you from some bullshit. I remember during the 2016 presidential election, country was very divided as it is want to be. And if you ever, if it ever came up that you were not voting for one of the two big candidates, they would flip their lids and they would say things like, oh, you're not voting for blank. That means you're basically giving a vote for blank. Okay. (laughs) And the problem with that, of course, is that you're not doing what that person wants. Not that you're exercising your right to vote or anything. No, that's not important. What are you, stupid? You're not listening to that person. That's the biggest problem. And that means you're a bad person. These political ads and campaigns, they wreak havoc on people's minds. They make them become extremists. Wherever their party leans, they want to they wanna just fall into that. They don't want to just lean into it. They want to go balls deep into that. Balls deep. I'm talking, you're on one side and the other party's doing something that's not, you know, quite in line with what your party's doing that means you hate that other thing and you love the thing your party's doing everything they do of course you can't just pick and choose like a person who has a complex moral compass no it's it's i'm choosing these these people everything they do is perfect and that's always fun around thanksgiving right thankfully i've never suffered from this you know very political holiday times but i hear that complaint from a lot of people after the elections and Thanksgiving, which is near the end of November for international listeners, people just get pretty wild, apparently. It's like, oh my God, can't believe you voted for blanky blank. You should have voted for blankety blank, you fucking idiot. And then things just go wild. But you don't have to wait till Thanksgiving for this to be a fun war zone. You can just go online, say anything, say, en- say anything, say anything in favor of a politician, against them completely neutral, and you'll get attacked. It's very fun. That's why you kind of have to take this as, as a joke, or rather, not very seriously. The fa- <laughs> Not that either, either presidential pick will change the country radically, because if they would, they wouldn't 
be able to run, of course, because that's how the country works. So it's not it's not like, you know, a huge joke, but you got to be able to take it not not so seriously. For me personally, my favorite part of presidential elections are the memes. 2016 was just the greatest, absolutely the greatest. You had Donald Trump just having the best words ever. And you had Hillary Clinton creating nuclear level cringe like Pokemon Go to the polls. I'm convinced that's why she lost, by the way. <laughs> it was a fun time. What was less fun is obviously four years of Trump doing things that people were complaining about and then the, the defense force coming in and complaining about the complaining. And it was just very, very, very exhausting. I'm convinced that if you go on the internet, you should put a block on political content if you want to retain your sanity. Now, obviously, if you find it all very funny, then you know go for it. But I'd recommend not being political online if you're not ready for a bunch of people hopping down your throat it's just it's just it's legitimately exhausting god forbid you criticize or ask questions about a candidate because then the defenders will just call you very bad words not that it really matters you can say words sticks and stones blah 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 right but the issue is that they are going to take it very 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 seriously and it's just, it's just going to be not fun. It's like when someone takes a joke very seriously, it just becomes like, Ugh, all right, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> it's, it, it's it. You ruined the fun. I'm not, I'm not in the mood anymore. It's fine. And the wild thing, too, is that questions are very, very justified during presidential elections because both sides, and again, I say both sides because the third party candidates do not matter. They, they have no... <laughs> They have no part in this, essentially. The two sides are just claiming various things, and the other side's claiming that's actually a huge lie. And then the, the other side against is actually, what you're doing is a conspiracy theory and a cover-up. Here's, here's, some, here's some things to the contrary. And then they, it's just back and forth saying, no, you're lying. No, you're lying. To the point where if you try to search something up, you try to find the actual answer, it's damn near impossible because all you find are the conflicting words of both sides. And you just are left with the choice to just ignore them, I guess, unless you want to drink the Kool-Aid of one particular party over the other. And this doesn't just last during election time. In a couple of months, a couple of years in the future, you try to look into this. Sometimes these issues are definit definitively resolved. But other times you look into it, something from a few years ago, and again, all you can find is just the back and forth contradictory information and you just never, you will never know. So it spreads disinformation, not only at the time, but into the future. And the problem with this is that some people, as I said, drink the Kool-Aid and they take this disinformation as fact and they attack others who drank the Kool-Aid of the other disinformation. So we have two people attacking and vomiting wrong things at each other, and I don't think the country gets better for it, to be honest with you. Not that it really matters, because with the news cycle the way it is, none of this stuff is important. I mean, at the time of this recording, Donald Trump has been shot at, not once, but twice. But people are spending more airtime discussing whether or not Haitians eat cats and dogs. And if you give it another week, they'll be on another topic that also is not going to be that important later on. So basically, if you want to check the news during a presidential election cycle, you are going to be shit out of luck if you want to find a definitive answer. Here's what I, what I recommend you do. Ignore all of this shit. All of it. Ignore all of it. The week before the election, look up a website. One of them, one, one decent one is called BallotReady.com. Excuse me, BallotReady.org. And just look up the candidates' positions. They will tell you when they said a certain thing about a certain topic. I know other websites do this as well. So look, just find one. Look up your candidates. Look up all the candidates available, Republican, Democratic, whatever. Look them all up. Look up all their views. Choose the one that aligns with you the most. 
and just vote for that one. That's it. Ignore everything else that you hear and see because it's all a big fucking ad. I promise you, you will have a much better time mentally if you don't pay too much attention to that, unless you're just in it from the, for the funsies. I remember when the results of the 2016 presidential election were coming out, I was up, <laughs> I was up late playing Destiny with my cousins, and I forget when it was, 10 p.m., 1 a.m., whatever, and it was coming in that Donald Trump won. I was like, what the fuck? I'm not going to say my political views on here. But at the time, most people thought Hillary Clinton was going to win because of all the poll data and all that stuff. When this was coming out, I was like, wow, <laughs> this is going to be really fucking funny. <laughs> it's like a humongous political upset. And that was very funny. The next four years were not that funny because of, as I said, again, just the constant complaining and the complaints about the complaining. But at the time, it was just, man, that was funny. <laughs> Just uh, the complete arrogance of one side just fell over and it was, it was hilarious. But we all lose here, so it doesn't matter. I don't think any other... I mean, there are other countries that have worse elections in a way. They have you know, borderline dictators, sometimes actual dictators. Oftentimes, the political parties are also not in favor of the people. They're just a popularity contest, just big ad campaign, and it's, it's just kind of fucked up. But the U.S. elections, they get the most coverage because I think they are, aside from the actual dictatorships that happen, I think the U.S. elections are the most entertaining if you don't live there. If you live there, it's, kind of, it's, it's entertaining, but it's also fairly depressing. But if you don't live here, this has got to be the funniest shit in the world. So I hope you guys enjoy. But for everyone else, please uh, stay off the internets. The political internets and the news, because you, uh, you will rot your brain and you, you just, <laughs> you're not going to make it till December if you take in all this stuff. Unless, again, you're into reality shows. <sighs> anyway, good luck to all you guys voting today. Have fun. Don't get shot in the, while waiting in line or whatever happens in America. I don't know. Just sucks. <laughs> just sucks lately. So leave a comment. Who are you voting for? Who did you vote for? Who do you hate? Are you voting at all? I am, but I won't tell you who for. Leave a one-star review if you think I'm voting for blank blankety and leave a five-star review if you think I'm voting for blankety blank. All right, see you next time. You're not gonna make it. No, you ain't gonna make it. You're not gonna make it.